Graphs are an amazing data structure. And that is primarily because all of the modern problems that you see, they can be solved only by using graphs. In our previous video, we explored some of the basics around a graph data structure. And most importantly, we understood why did you even need this data structure in the first place? So naturally, we want to learn more about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, primarily, I want to talk about graphs in general, about what all different types are possible and what can you do with them. I will try to create some real life scenarios and applications that you will be able to correlate to. Once again, we won't be writing any code in this video because I want that you make all of your fundamentals strong first. You must understand why we are taking this graph and what all applications are possible. Without further ado, let's get started. Doing a quick recap, what all do we know about graphs so far? A typical graph looks something like this. And what all components does it have? It has all of these nodes or vertices, which have all of your data. And then you have all of these edges. So each edge will connect two vertices, correct? And then in a graph, it is not necessary how many edges connect to a vertex. For example, this particular vertex has two edges connected to it, right? And this particular vertex has four edges. So there is no limit. You can connect any number of nodes with any number of nodes, right? The other term that you must know is a degree of a node. So a degree of a node simply means how many edges does a node have? For example, the vertex B has two edges, right? So its degree is two. The vertex D, it has four edges, right? So the degree of vertex D will be four. Similarly, you can find out the degree of all of these nodes individually, right? So these are all the components that make up a graph. And based upon how all of them are arranged, you can have several different types. For the first type, we have what you call as the finite graph. A finite graph simply means that the number of nodes that you have, those are fixed. All of the connections can differ, but the nodes defined will be fixed. So you can try to take up an example that, okay, you can have a graph of all the currencies in the world, or you can have a graph of all of the countries in the world. So that is a finite graph. You know that, okay, I will have n number of countries. So that is what a finite graph actually means. The next thing that you have is an infinite graph. Infinite graph simply means that there is no limit on the number of nodes that you can have. One example you can think of is the World Wide Web or the internet. You can keep on adding nodes as much as you can. There can be new websites every day and this graph never ends. This graph will keep on growing and that is why we call it as an infinite graph. Moving on, what we have next is called as a simple graph. A simple graph means that there can be only one edge between two particular nodes. You cannot have multiple edges like this. This is not allowed. If you're defining any two nodes, then there can be only one connection between them. So you can try to take up an example that, okay, this can be like a network of friends. You have all of your friends, right? So you can have a one connection with one of your friend. You cannot have three different connections with a single friend. So this is one example of a simple graph. And then based upon the concept that we just discussed, we also have a multigraph. A multigraph means that between two nodes, you can have more than one edges. For example, look at the nodes B and C. They are connected by one edge that looks like this. And you have one more edge that is connecting them. That means there are two ways to reach from node B to node C. And then if you want to think about an example, just try to think about these two nodes as two different cities in a map or two different locations on a map. There can be two different routes that are connecting both of the locations, right? And it is not necessary that these two edges are the same. So such an example is called as a multigraph. The next type of graph that we are talking about is called a trivial graph. 
A trivial graph is nothing but a node that is just lying by itself. It does not have any neighbors, any adjacent nodes, any edges connected to it. It is just lying there by itself. If you want to think about an example, just think of it like a family tree that does not have any neighbors or any children. So this may be kind of a single parent family tree, correct? What happens when you have a bunch of trivial graphs? So all of these nodes, they are trivial graphs in itself. And when none of them are connected by each other, we call them as a null graph. So you have all of these individual nodes defined, but there is no connection between them. That is why you call it as a null graph. If you want to think about a null graph, just try to imagine a newly constructed social network site. So all of these nodes, they are individual profiles, but none of them have any friends. So that is why they are not connected to each other at all. You can also try to think about null graphs as some users which might be spam. So try to think, you have a very large network and all of them are connected, right? But then you have all of these suspicious profiles that just got created and they have no connections. Yes, it could be authentic, but it just gives you an idea that, okay, that is how you can at least start monitoring or start to identify that, hey, are these profiles fake or do you want to do something about them? So that is where null graphs come in handy. All the graphs that we have been discussing up till now, you have one edge between two different nodes, correct? But what happens if you have an edge that starts and end at the same node itself? Those kind of graphs are known as pseudo graphs. If you want to think about an example, just try to think about edges as certain interests. Let us say you have an edge that represents dancing. You have one more edge that represents singing. And then you have this edge which represents skating. So this kind of graph is representing interests. So A has an interest of skating. A and B both have the interest of dancing. And then B and D have the same interest of singing. So this is how you define pseudo graphs. Moving ahead, the next type of graphs are known as regular graphs. So if you remember, we talked about the degree of each node. Right now, the degree of node A is 2, node B is 2, node D is 2, and node C is once again 2. So in any case, when the degree of all of the nodes in the graph is the same, that graph is known as a regular graph. If you want to think about a real world example, Try to think about any of the sporting tournament. For example, in the Cricket World Cup, each team will try to play the same number of matches, right? That is how you determine your points table. So each team is playing 7 matches when there are a total of 8 teams in particular, correct? So that is what a regular graph looks like. Until now, all of the graphs that we defined had simple edges, right? But what happens? if we add some weight to an edge. So this number kind of represents the cost to reach from node A to node B. And this cost could be in any form. You can try to think about this graph as a network of cities. So you have all of these four different cities and this could be the distance to reach from city A to city B. Then this is the distance to reach from city B to city D. Then once again, this can be the distance to reach from city A to city D. Similarly, you can use these weights in a lot of different ways. You can define these weights as the toll cost as well. Let us say that to reach from city A to city D, you have to pay a toll of 50. So there can be a lot of different scenarios. And all of these scenarios come under the example of a weighted graph. To keep up with all the variations, until now, you did not have any directions in any of your edges, right? So it simply meant that you can go from A to B and you can also go from B to A. But this time you have defined all of these directions. This is known as a directed graph. It simply means that when you're defining an edge from B to A, you define this direction. It means you can go from B to A, but you cannot go from A to B. This is not possible. To come up with some real-world scenarios about a directed graph, 
you can try to think about flowcharts or diffusion diagrams. So you are going in a certain direction, but it is not necessary that there is a way backwards as well. So that is where you will find directed graphs in general. Just like directed graphs, you have undirected graphs as well. And that is what we have been dealing up till now, right? All the nodes are connected with each other and they are bidirectional. And you can try to think about all of the research papers, right? For example, if you see two research papers, they can try to refer each other. And that is a very good example about how a undirected graph can look like. Next, what we have is called as a complete graph. The property of a complete graph is that each node in the graph is connected to all of the other nodes directly. So you can see that node A is directly connected to nodes B, C and D. Similarly, node B is connected to A, C and D. In other words, you can say that for a graph to be complete, the degree of each node in the graph, that should be equal to the number of vertices minus one. So this graph has four vertices. So each node should have a degree of three. This is true over here. And that is why we call it as a complete graph. Moving on from a complete graph, what happens when your nodes are connected, but they are not connected directly. That is when you get a connected graph. In a connected graph, you can reach from one node to other by any way possible. So this can be an example of all of your flight network. You can consider all of these different nodes as all the different airports in the world. So at any time you can reach from one airport to the other. It is not necessary that they have to be connected directly. You can try to think that, okay, one airport is in Iceland and the other airport is in Australia. Yes, they are not connected directly, but it does not mean that you cannot reach airport A from airport D. As long as there is a connection, then you will call it as a connected graph. Coming on from connected graphs, the next thing that you have are disconnected graphs. So these two graphs are correct in themselves, but they are not connected with each other. So you can try to think about an example. This could be all the roads that are in the United States. And this graph could be all the roads that are in Asia. Now, all of these roads, they are connected in themselves. But there is no connection between a road in the United States and in Asia. So this is an example of a disconnected graph. After that, the next type of graph that we have is called a cyclic graph. So any time in a graph, if you find a cycle, that means you can start from a node and you can end up at the same node. Then this type of graph is called a cyclic graph. And just like you have a cyclic graph, you also have an acyclic graph. In an acyclic graph, you will never have a cycle. For example, in this graph, if you start from the node F, there is no way that you make a path and you can reach node F again. Correct? Now, what happens if you try to combine two different concepts? If you try to add the directions to your edges and you try to also add weights to your edges, then what you get is a directed acyclic graph. So directed acyclic graph means that you are defining a path that, okay, you will reach from node C to node B and this is the cost. You will find these examples when you're trying to create a build pipeline. So try to think, you have so many different test cases and then once all of your test cases pass, you will try to compile your code. Once you compile your code, then you will go on and deploy it. So this whole entire process, this is called as a directed acyclic graph or DAGs in general. You will hear a lot about them when you get into product lifecycle and the releases. The last type of graph I want to talk about is called a subgraph. So for example, if you have this complete graph and then if you just want to analyze a certain portion of the graph, then you try to snip it out and the graph that you get is known as a subgraph. Now, all of these different type of graphs have all different applications and it is essential to understand them because when you're reading problems, you will be able to identify that, okay, 
for this particular problem, I need to apply this type of a graph. So always try to relate it with a real world scenario. That will be always helpful. I hope you got a good understanding about all of the different type of graphs that are possible. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that graphs as a topic is very huge. So take your time, be patient and build out all of your fundamentals strong very first. Just try to come up with some different scenarios and applications where you can apply all these different type of graphs. Tell me everything in the comment section below and it will become a very good collection of all the different applications whenever you have to come back and refer to them in the future. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. This really keeps me going. For the, my next upcoming videos, I will be discussing about adjacency metrics and adjacency lists about how you can go and represent graphs. Until then, stay tuned and see ya.